Hej, witajcie na kanale EV Repair, kanale, na którym chcę Wam pokazać, że samochody elektryczne to nie jest czarna magia. W dzisiejszym odcinku zabieram Was do Holandii, pod Eindhoven, do firmy Wohatie Extravert, zajmujące się konwersją klasycznych Porsche 911 na samochody elektryczne. Jest to bardzo ciekawy materiał, także serdecznie Was zapraszam. Oglądajcie. Dodatkowo chciałem jeszcze dołożyć, że materiał jest w języku angielskim, a będzie okraszony polskimi napisami. Nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Bart. Uh, I'm came from Poland, and I'm, we are very interested about what you are doing here. Yeah. So just to give short reference to our viewers, uh, we are in the company which is transferring old Porsches into into EV cars. So if you introduce a little bit of yourself and what you are doing here. Sure. Yes. Uh, welcome, Bart. Uh, welcome all of you. It's uh, my name is Martin. I'm from uh, the company Voiture Extraver, French name, and we will rebuilt German cars so uh, it's uh, and we do it in Holland so everything nice combination. is a, a nice combination <laughs> and you're from Poland so it's uh, it's uh, it's an international venture uh, yeah we uh, we rebuilt the, the classic that you that you know uh, uh, and love uh, but we rebuilt it completely like an EV it's like a modern car uh, with a uh, with the classic looks that you uh, that we that we love it's uh, yeah we, we, we really fancy classic design classic cars uh, we love the, the the effect that they have on people. Uh, they bring a smile not only to the people driving the car, but mm -hmm. also to people on the streets. Of course, uh, especially the car a car like this. Uh, it may be a bit different with really hyper cars from the days, but uh, but classic car like this. Is, if is I may have just fun. one question, which yeah. is just popping in my mind, is that you know. Uh, what I'm telling to my viewers is that basically transferring the this classical car into EV gives you nice things, which brings you to the classic car, which drives in a way that is acceptable right now, because most probably you know, I know that very well, yeah. driving those cars in an original setup is kind of a headache. It is, it is. Uh, specifically this car, because of course it's the, the pinnacle of classic design, but the original, which was, construct, was uh, introduced in 1964, it had a short wheelbase, this one is a bit longer than the mm -hmm. original, that short wheelbase was, was really hard to drive. The reason that Porsche uh, uh, made it a bit longer was because it, it was hard to handle. And still, at this moment, uh, the car is, uh, is a, a very peculiar drive. So uh, you had to be re like a real good driver to, to be able to, to, to handle this one, especially as the cars got more potent, more uh, bigger engines, more, uh, more horsepower, more uh, torque, uh, that became, became increasingly different, uh, difficult. We sort of solved that a bit by having a better weight distribution of the car. Mm -hmm. It used to be really rear heavy, not only on the, on the power, but also on the weight. On the engine. Exactly. Today we have a car at which some Porsche enthusiasts really say, it's a car that always has a full tank. Because the, when you, the tank, the classic tank uh, was in the front, open. of we, course. We cannot show you that, unfortunately, no. <laughs> it's a technology, but... Uh, yeah, no, the classic tank was in the, used to be in the front, and if you had a full tank, then you had a lot of yeah, weight exactly. on the front, and then you could like, handle the car much better than when the, the weight disappeared, because the tank was empty. We have batteries, both in the rear and in the front, so the weight distribution is not only better, but it's always like that. Mm -hmm. It's not like disappearing while you drive. So then I have a question about the transmission. So you delete transmission or you keep transmission as it was? We take everything out that had to do with the, the original drivetrain. So right. we, leave, we, do, we take out the gearbox, we take out the differential, we take out the engine, we take out, of course, all the, re all the, 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 all the rest. Okay, so then it, it's much smoother to drive right now, I think, then, you know... Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. But people are really going mad about the, the later generation G50 gearbox of the, of the car, I think, was introduced later, later in, the, in the 80s. But still, if you compare that to driving today, it's, it's like, uh, it's, it's a different. Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, it's difficult. And that is okay. If you drive a classic car, that's part of the fun as well. What we see is that we address co uh, customers that have love for the design, but they don't know how to, uh, or not per se, they don't know how to, uh, to, 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 to work on it. And they like driving it, they like uh, using it, but they don't like to, to, to be, uh, uh, make it, play the mechanic uh, all winter. So, so, yeah. so can we put it that way, that those cars are kind of an answer to the modern enthusiast of the old technology? The, uh, Not uh, that old as we are. Exactly. The younger people who don't understand the old, really old cars. Yeah, I think mm. so. And, and not only the typical guys that, that love those cars, but it's also women customers that we have. 
uh, uh, not because we, uh, women can't can't come to any technical uh, repairs, etc., or car, but they tend to enjoy driving the car much more of repairing, than repairing yeah, it also. and uh, being afraid <laughs> that you are next to the, to the highway with a uh, with a bit of, with a lot of oil behind the behind the car or it's it's broke, etc. So the, the 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 modern day technology, indeed, the driving behavior of a modern car. Uh, 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 introducing that in a classic design that is like the sweet spot of what we are. So where then are. let me jump into the question of technical data. So okay. the range, you know, battery and all the stuff, if you could. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a, what we knew from the beginning is that we wanted to build a car that has, that has a serious driving capabilities. So it has to be uh, capable to, to, like to, to be to, like a Tesla. <laughs> it has to be possible to use it like as if like as if you had a modern car mm -hmm. so that is a minimum range of two three hundred kilometers uh, regular speeds of course uh, uh, enthusiast uh, uh, acceleration uh, and that is basically what we what we did and also uh, like running out of, a, of battery is, is a problem if you can't fill it up quickly again so we need to have fast charging as well so large battery fast charging and and good performance uh, and we have all that. We have a 60 kilowatt hour battery, which sounds like compared to modern Teslas, for example, is not too much. But the car is about a thousand kilos lighter than a Tesla. Surely. This is not 2300 kilos, this is 1400 kilos. And you don't have to carry the weight around. So it's like Tesla so Model 3, even, even, yeah, even lighter. Even lighter, because yeah. I think that, that one is also 1900 kilos. So it's, it's really, it's, it's a lightweight car, although it's a bit heavier than the original, uh, than the original uh, classic. Uh, it's still a lightweight car. 60 kilowatt hours caters for over 400 kilometers WLTP range. Which is In 300 per, max. Uh, it's 300, 330 kilometers. It depends really on your enthusiasm, of course. <laughs> this car you used to drive enthusiast now, nah, well, right. then it's getting to, uh, to 250, 250, 300. Of course, uh, if you drive it fast. Uh, but if you do do normal traffic, uh, I, then do, I do uh, 300. Sh more. Very short question yeah. about the disadvantages. So th there is any problem with heating inside of the cabin or something, or you fixed everything? You fixed everything, because yes, there was a problem, of mm -hmm. course, because you take out the, the inefficient engine in the, in the back. Yeah. Uh, the inefficient engine had one advantage, it provided heating. you a lot of heat, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and you get rid of that heat, uh, that is a good thing, but you, don't, you need it sometimes in the cabin. So you need heating. But you also need cooling because today, driving today in a car uh, you, that you would like to drive every day, so you want to say it's some air conditioned? conditioned? It's air conditioned, it's climatized. All yes, right. absolutely. So we developed that ourselves because uh, the existing systems, uh, aftermarket systems, really didn't do good because they are typically built for a classic 911. And if and then you need, of course you need cooling, but you don't have heating because mm -hmm. the heating was already available. So we had to combine. Uh, those two and really built an entire system that is doing uh, both of those uh, those things. Okay. Then so we have comfort yeah. functions like air conditioning, uh, power steering. You need that a bit because you have a bit heavier front. Those ABSs, ASPs. Uh, no, 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 we don't. Okay. We didn't use <laughs> that. No, then you get into a different league of, of leg legislation homologation, and that we didn't Understood. want to uh, to get into. No, but th this this is home, home, how to say uh, certified as a short. Serious, something like that. It's uh, so no, it's a, no, because no? unfortunately that is not possible. Mm -hmm. Because the donor vehicles that we use, we call them donor vehicles. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the original, uh, we typically pick from the days and age of between 1977, 1983. Um, they are identical. You say, I say that uh, that too. But uh, TÜV or RTW in the, in the Netherlands, they uh, homologation uh, authorities, they say these are all different years. So if you have different donor vehicles, you have a different end car. And every car needs its own uh, TÜV. Uh, we, we work with the okay. German TÜV to, to get the cars uh, legalized. But this gives you a lot of possibilities to export cars, right? Worldwide? Exactly, yeah. Because what we yeah we see typically that our market is 50-50 uh, Europe, uh, United States. We also do some Middle East, uh, but that is, uh, that is true. So the United States is an important market for us. And for that, we use original American donor cars. They are widely available because Porsche has sold really a lot of cars uh, in the days. Mm -hmm. uh, they are now back in Europe uh, for a large, uh, large part because uh, for restoration purposes and they have been kept better. Uh, so we can use those cars and we, we always pick uh, uh, original uh, US cars to, uh, to okay. export back to, uh, to them. Let me ask you about a couple of technical questions. Sure. Uh, if, you don't, you don't, if you don't feel comfortable, just no, don't course. give me an answer. So first of all, it, is that all water-cooled? Let's say water-cooled. 
yeah. or air cooled, as it was original, I think. Yeah, the, the original engine was was air cooled. Our uh, high voltage system is water cooled. Okay. Yeah, we have a, 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 a water cooling circuit in the rear where all the high voltage components are, and we cool them with water. Yeah. It's really um, uh, okay because, like, uh, uh, electrical engine and all the different components, they tend to be not not much hotter than uh, 60, 60 degrees. Maybe the charger sometimes gets a bit more warmer, but but that you can cool that really well down. Mm -hmm. It's not like the one hundred and thirty degrees that you have on a, on a typical. I will engine. ask one question, with not very direct. So this is more like Tesla system or more like I don't know Nissan or whatever well, European. Well, it's a good good comparison. Tesla is is really way ahead of any other player in the market and that has a lot to do with their battery technology mm -hmm. what they have done with the batteries is really quite amazing but yep. also with the engines but the batteries i always find that that that's superb uh, especially are, BMS, right? Yeah, it's the mm -hmm. BMS and the water cooling of the entire system with sure. all the different kinds of uh, 6,000, 8,000, 9,000 cells that they use. That is really something that they can so much, they can control the car so well and its behavior, yes. not only while driving, but also while charging or preparing to charge, or even, and heating or, up. Or even like, yeah, being on the park lot. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So that, that is a really important part. That is uh, a bridge too far for us at this moment. So we chose to uh, to air condition in the, 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 the batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the good thing about that is we don't care so much about uh, the amount of batteries, but we have quite a large pack, uh, battery pack compared to the, to the motor that we use. So the batteries during driving, even do you, if you do some extreme driving, uh, they, they won't even notice that they are being discharged. Uh, so there's no not so much uh, uh, of a problem. It's it's mainly charging that uh, puts more strain on the batteries. But we we can fast charge with up to 90 kilowatts, which Via is one CCS CCS two or CCS one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so so that is that is quite a bit of energy that's getting into the pack. Uh, so that that's where we control uh, control uh, the batteries uh, the most. But then still, it's uh, they are very uh, very capable batteries. That is. Uh, so can we sit down together in the car and? Sure. It is allowed. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it is allowed. We can sit. Uh, um, you can take a, a place behind you. This is a car in production, so it's not completely finished. You see that it's missing. Uh, it's missing the wipers, and we have some uh, covers on the seat. Uh, I'm not sure. It's not on at this moment. No. <clears throat> so we're working on this one. We did some software updates and we had some hardware changes to uh, to this car. It's a really early production that we updated a bit. So then the question is about what what are you how to say upgrading instead of interior, especially you know uh, all those instrument clusters and stuff uh, yeah. comparing to the original. Well, the, the the customers know and love the classic original. So we want to keep the car as original as possible. Of course, you need to introduce new functions to a car like mm -hmm. this, because uh, the temperature of the engine is really not of importance to the customer, but you want to know uh, what the state of charge is, for example. So what we did is we replaced all the original gauges with displays, and the displays mimic quite well uh, the original look and feel of the car. Mm -hmm. And we introduced the head unit, uh, the radio that you, that you know. Uh, and those are the main uh, 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 modern interface to the classic car uh, as you, uh, as the customer prefers it, mm -hmm. and from the head unit and the and the and the displays, you have access to all the relevant information. Uh, of course, you're flexible with displays, so this 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 this, uh, this gauge that is uh, that is only using uh, 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 the, uh, the arm to indicate the revs. Mm -hmm. It can also be if you have a display, it can also be uh, like a rear camera, rear, uh, rear view camera if you drive backwards or it can be it can provide temporary functions so that is really nice and it's something that that we we know from modern cars although not as good as we uh, as we do because i think really think we did a good job there uh, and, but it also uh, helps you uh, uh, integrating this car uh, a classic design into a modern uh, modern age we really felt it was important to to digitize the entire car so every handle that you see although original it's not uh, it's not doing the the the, the it's not uh, the, uh, switching it's not the, the the the, the, exact, the power. This it's, is a switch. Uh, exactly, it's it's just a signal. Yeah, it's yeah. a signal to the computer, and the computer decides what to do with that signal. So you can give multiple functions to 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 handles or or, or, or uh, 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 that, that that used to be single uh, single purpose. Yeah. So this is like te the newest Teslas. Actually. Well, <laughs> well yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, although we don't believe in touch in the car. 
so we don't have touch it one question which just pops again so uh, are you for heating i didn't i didn't clearly understood do you use something like ptc heater more or yeah so yeah like like most of the exactly. manufacturers yeah yeah there is of course uh, you have a water pump kind of uh, uh, system as well a bit difficult uh, comp complicated and uh, and and with too much too much uh, um, yeah, and we need know for space. We know those cars. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, and it is and it's difficult to get it all packed into a, cl a classic uh, 911, which is really no, small. We don't have heater is far. Uh, if it, it can be quite useful, so uh, you know, in Tesla they use this one or two, up to three kilowatt PTC heater. It, it yeah. works fine. Yeah, it tends to break sometimes, but uh, yeah, you yeah. Know. yeah, we use same uh, same technology. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much. It's an extremely nice car. Tak jak widzieliście w naszym materiale, firma Voratier Extravert jest firmą entuzjastów. Martę, z którym rozmawialiśmy na temat jego projektów i jego produktów tak naprawdę, był człowiekiem pełnym energii, pełnym przekonania do tego, co robi, a jednocześnie posiadającym niesamowicie głęboką wiedzę w zakresie tego, czym się zajmują. Trzeba powiedzieć, że produkty, które oni przygotowują dla swoich klientów są zrobione naprawdę na bardzo wysokim poziomie i nie mają nic wspólnego z prostymi konwersjami. Samochody są skonwertowane bardzo głęboko, ale też i przy okazji na bardzo wysokim poziomie co mówi, że ten samochód później wygląda dokładnie tak jak samochód klasyczny, jest praktycznie nie do odróżnienia, a z drugiej strony jeździ się nim bardzo przyjemnie. Dla Waszej informacji muszę też dodać, że te samochody oczywiście nie są tanie. Jeden egzemplarz kosztuje równowartość 350 tysięcy euro, więc jest to skierowane raczej do zamożniejszego klienta. Tak czy siak, bardzo się cieszę, że istnieją takie firmy, bardzo mocno też jakby czuję się związany z tego typu ludźmi, jak właśnie kolega Martin, który tak bardzo się angażuje w swoją pracę. Jest to podobne do tego, jak my podchodzimy do swojej pracy, jak tworzyliśmy i Repair. Także bardzo dziękuję koledze Martin za tą rozmowę, a Wam dziękuję za lajkowanie, oglądanie, subskrybowanie i oczywiście jak zawsze zapraszam Was do wspierania naszego kanału. Dziękuję, trzymajcie się, na razie.